Hello everyone, welcome to the DraftKings Daily Trot. I'm Big Italy 42. He is Scott Mailwick at Sports 25 to Life. We're talking about tonight's action on DraftKings, and it's a nice big slate, ton of options. We got a game in cores. We've got some of the best pitchers in the game going tonight. So uh some real exciting stuff to go over tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's a nice slate for a Monday for sure. Absolutely. I'm excited about this slate. So starting things off, I'm going to start with the second most expensive pitcher, which is a little bit surprising to me. Clayton Kershaw facing off against the worst offense in the league against lefties. Yeah. Not even close. His peripheral numbers tell you that he isn't having a good season, but it, when you dig deeper, 33.3% strikeout rate, highest of his career. Ground ball rate of 50%, which is great. Uh, his BABIP is 378. So that right there yeah. is telling you he's getting really unlucky. Home run to fly ball rate, 22.2%. Career average under 7 a lot of these things are going to regress because he's still mowing guys down. And, I mean, for me, it's not even close. He's by far the top option tonight, even over Felix Hernandez. Because Hernandez is facing a team that is 28th in the league against righties. But let's be honest, that team has a lot more talent than a 28th ranked team. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like Felix, like, a lot. But I would need him to be at least 800 a 1,000 cheaper to really consider him over Kershaw. And when he costs 200 more, it just doesn't really make any sense. Yep. Um, I mean, you're not going to be able to fit both. So, I mean, I think Hernandez is a pretty interesting GPP play just Definitely. because, I mean, if Kershaw does struggle a little bit, he gives up a home, three-run home run at some point during the game, something like that. I mean, I think Felix could have a great game here. I just have a really hard time play, paying more for him than Kershaw against Milwaukee, who's been basically shut down by every pitcher they've faced so far. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree there. I mean, it's not to say that Felix is a bad play, but like you mentioned, it's, it's the price there on DraftKings. I mean, yeah. You see a difference? Yeah, they're both certainly great plays, but I'm with you, especially cash games. There's no way it'll be Felix over Kershaw for me. It's going to be Kershaw Yeah, day. Same, same thing here. I mean, move down the list a little bit. I mean, I think you have to take Kershaw for the most part. I mean, there's no one else that it really feels like as good of a price play, really. Um, I think Bumgarner's a decent play against San Diego, but I don't love it. I mean, they have some pretty good righties in their lineup. Uh, Bumgarner hasn't been great. Yeah, they won a top uh, offense in the league against lefties. So I mean, I'm a little, I'm a little apprehensive there too. Yeah, he's a nice favorite though. I mean, I think he's a decent swerve if you need a little bit of extra cap. But I mean, the upside with Kershaw and Felix tonight is just massive compared to him. Yep. And I just don't feel great about it. I mean, maybe a GPP play. Probably not going to pay that for cash games as my second pitcher. I'd much rather just pay up for my first pitcher and look a little bit further down here. Um, the guy I'm looking at quite a bit is uh, Kucho. Yep. Um, Texas is a little bit better against lefties than righties. Um, looks like a nice day there, nice and warm, which um, should be solid for him. He's been pitching a decent number of innings. I have him averaging 6.9 on the season so far. Um, so that's really solid. I mean, if you can get seven innings out of him every time, that's great. I mean, most guys are throwing six innings right now. So if you're getting seven with maybe upside for eight or nine, with the way he's pitched over the last – what, 45 games? I mean, he's looked almost as good as anybody. Oh, he, he's been incredible. I mean, it's 65.3% yeah. ground ball rate. His strikeouts aren't where you'd like him to be, but he hasn't allowed a home run. Woba under 180 to lefties and righties. And like yeah. you said, he's eating up innings. Yeah, exactly. He's he's keeping his pitch count down. Like you said, he's not striking out a lot of people, but that's what's allowing him to pitch so many innings. I mean, we've seen guys have massive pitch counts and only go five and two-thirds, rack up eight or nine strikeouts. But, I mean... He's going to give you seven innings most nights, and then sometimes he's going to give you a decent strikeout game with eight or nine because, I mean, he's not a bad strikeout pitcher. He's just right around the average, a little bit below. Yep. Um, I think he's a really strong play tonight as a second pitcher. Yeah, I'm completely with you there. He's he's my favorite pitcher around that price range at 8K. And, uh, I mean, you look at the guys around him. Carlos Martinez makes for a fine play too, but risky against that that Chicago Cubs lineup. Um, yep. He's been tough on righties, but he has he has gotten tagged for four homers so far this year. you got to like the strikeout rate. 23.5%. We know the Cubs like to strike out a lot, but they also have a ton of big bats in that lineup, and when they get going, they can get going in a hurry. So he's GPP only for me. A um, couple other guys. Clay Buckles is interesting at $6,800. He hasn't been great so far this season, but he's shown some flashes, and against this same Tampa Bay team at Tropicana, 27.9 points, six innings, just two hits, one earned run, 10 Ks. You obviously aren't expecting that type of performance from him again tonight. But, I mean, this is the same lineup, and they didn't get any better in the past two weeks. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think he's a nice option. Not a lot of other guys I'm really loving, though, pitching-wise. I mean, I, I don't think there's a lot of great matchups out there. Um, a value GPP guy I'm looking at, I usually look around like that 5-6K range on DraftKings for a GPP pitcher option. 
Um, I think Jesse Hahn's going to be really low owned against Minnesota. Minnesota's looked a lot better with the bats lately, um, but they don't really scare me. I think for six thousand, you can probably get six innings, six strikeouts out of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, if he pitches halfway decent and Oakland can put some runs on the board, I mean, he could easily get the win, even though he's not favored. It's a pretty close uh, spread here. He's a guy I'm going to look at in GPPs a decent amount. Probably pair him with uh, Kershaw or Felix quite a bit so I can load up on some batters if I uh, like some of the higher-priced batters today. Yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, it seems like you got to have one of these top arms. Get yourself a value guy. I'm, I'm with you there. That's about the only other guy that I'm even considering on tonight's slate. Yeah. All right, moving on to catcher, where Avin Gaddis is absolutely on fire right now. Gets a bad lefty again. I mean, the guy's got four home runs in his last three games. You're obviously chasing that if you're playing Gaddis. He's not a guy that's usually going to get three hits, three singles, doubles, things like that. I mean, but a ton of power. He's the most expensive guy, but for good reason, the way he's swinging a bat. If you can afford him, which is going to be tough if you're paying up a pitcher, which you should be. Um, if not him, Steven Vogt, once again, I like him at $3,400. He's... Still underpriced. All he did was hit two more homers last night. He's got six on the year. Um, cheaper guys, not a whole lot that I'm in love with. A.J. Przinsky, we know, has been swinging a hot bat at 3,100. Um, who else are you looking at here, catcher? Um, McCann against Dickey is a guy that's kind of interesting to me. I think there's some upside there. I mean, you never know with Dickey, though. Like, if he comes out and is throwing a great knuckleball, I mean, you're going to see a lot of 0 for 4s in the lineup. But he hasn't been great lately. McCann, pretty decent against him in the past, I believe. Um, over a decent sample size. Not great, though, but he's not the dicky that he was for two or three years when McCann was facing him a lot either. So um, I think he's a decent play. He's been pretty hot, too. There's a little bit of a rain concern in that game, I believe. Oh, they have a retractable roof there, don't yeah. they? So they don't have to worry about that then. Um, so uh, he's a guy I'll look at a little bit. No one else I'm really loving. I mean, va- total value-wise, if, like, Nieves starts for San Diego... At catcher, I mean, he's bare minimum 2,000 against the lefty. Um, he's been playing a decent amount against lefties also. So, I, I mean, I think you could punt with him. He usually hits sixth in the order against lefties. I don't love that it's Bumgarner, but uh, for 2,000, it's kind of hard to argue with as like a cash game punt. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. And if it's not him, if Derek Norris in the lineup, we know he mashes lefties. Yeah. So, and, I mean, he's, he's hot right now. Six hits in his last three games. He's only 3,100 as well. Yeah, so. I'm kind of expecting both of them to be in the lineup. So, um, that, yeah, that's a decent... I think they hit two and six the last time they faced the lefty, so that's kind of what I'm expecting right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't love either one of them against Bumgarner, but as a cash game play for their cheap and against lefties, I mean, it's hard to argue with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on here to first base, Paul Goldschmidt, your most expensive option, of course, in Coors Field against a bad lefty. So, I mean, I don't know about price considered, but he is your top option. He's got huge yeah. upside in this matchup if you can afford him. No way in hell I'm going to be able to fit him in my cash games with Kershaw and company. So uh, that's a GPP-only play for me. And I, I feel like both sites have done a really good job of tightening up the pricing for tonight's games. So, yeah, uh, Trumbo's way up, too. I think he's like the third or fourth most expensive first baseman on the board, if I yeah, saw that correctly. Yeah, third. Um, I mean, he's got outfield eligibility, so he's a little bit easier to fit, um, which is nice because if you – decide to go against the expensive pitcher options. I mean, you could sack that Arizona team. I'm guessing they're going to be lower owned now that they're way up in price because they've been hitting their at Colorado. Yep. Um, both those guys facing a lefty. I mean, it, it's a great situation. It's just a lot to pay for. And you got to think, at least in GPPs, they're going to be fairly heavily owned, I would think. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. And a uh, guy who's way too underpriced against a bad righty, Adrian yep. Gonzalez, $4,200. I'm sure you knew where I was going with that one. Yeah. I mean, Kyle Loesch has given up eight long balls already, two to lefties, six to righties. Obviously, he hasn't faced nearly as many lefties, but I love this Dodgers team as a sack tonight. Loesch has been terrible, and, I mean, that just furthers the point with Kershaw that he should get tons of run support. And, I mean, $4,200 is a travesty of a price for him in Miller Park tonight. Yeah, I feel kind of the same way about Freddie Freeman, too. I think both yeah. of those guys at 4200 against average at best righties is – a pretty good price to pay, especially in cash games when you really don't want to pay 5700 for Goldschmidt because you it's like almost impossible to go like Kershaw, Goldschmidt, and then put together anything you like the rest of the way. Yeah, uh, You'd almost have to take Han and then a yeah. couple 2,000 guys, right? So it makes it really tough. Um, so I'm really liking that 4200 price on those two. Uh, I don't mind Justin Morneau at 4100 against Cole Mentor either. Um, I mean, that's a pretty good price for being in course, so... yeah. Yeah, he's one of the few guys that's priced uh, priced down a little bit there. He seems yeah. to be the guy that flies under the radar, too. So maybe he gets a low ownership percentage, or maybe not since he's got a cheap price. But uh, 
Ike Davis at 3,500 is in play as yep. well if you want cheap. Beyond that, there's nobody I like below him. You, anybody you're looking at? Not really. I mean, Ike Davis is cheap enough. Um, I feel pretty good about that, to be honest. I don't think I'm going to go much cheaper at first base. I mean, it's just so hard to punt first base because you're giving up so much. Where if you're punting shortstop, I mean, you're giving up, like, Jimmy Rollins, who's been struggling and stuff like that. So um, it's not as bad. I just have a really hard time punting first base unless every, all the top guys have a really tough matchup or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Um, if we look at second base here, Jose Altuve against a bad lefty. We all know what he's capable of doing. The guy's been incredible. I mean, he didn't get multi-hits last night, which is pretty embarrassing for him. But uh, it's the first time in 10 games he didn't have multi-hits. So yeah. I'll, I'll let that one slide in. $5,400 seems like a steep price tag, but, I mean, for for what this man is capable of, I mean, if you can afford him, I, I don't mind paying up for him in some tournaments especially. It's Like we mentioned, it's going to be really tough to get him in your cash game lineups, but, I mean, he's he's got a ridiculously high floor at that price tag still. Yeah, there's a couple guys in the low 4,000s I like, um, second base-wise. D. Gordon's right in the middle there. He was out of the lineup yesterday. He should be fresh for today against Zimmerman or righty. Uh, he's been really, really solid before he took that day off yesterday. Um, Aaron Hill, 4,200 at Colorado against the lefty. Not a bad play. Um, who's the other one? Oh, Cano's all the way down to 4,100 against Shoemaker. Yep. Uh, that's a guy I'm going to look at, too. Yeah, and Shoemaker's been getting rocked recently. So, yep. um, you know, Seattle, for some reason, that's a close spread, but I, I still like some of the Seattle bats. I'm with you there. I think that they'll be able to get to him. He just hasn't looked good. His ground ball rate's at 26% on the season. I mean... It's it's been a bad bad way to go with Shoemaker. His velocity's down. I don't mind targeting him a ton tonight. Yeah, I think Cano is going to be a really solid play. Um, a couple of these other lefties, I'm sure we'll get to for Seattle too. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, speaking of one of those, as we move on to third base, Kyle Seager at thirty six hundred dollars. I mean, he's in a great spot as well. Really cheap, yeah. and like you mentioned, they're going to be really low owns. People aren't going to be on him because of the course game. Other other games in great spots. So I, I like that duo a lot. Yeah, especially for cash games. I mean, they haven't shown off a ton of upside recently. Um, Seattle hasn't been great as a whole uh, outside of Nelson Cruz, but I think this is a really, really solid matchup for them. Yeah. Like you said, awesome GPP play. I I don't mind both Cano and Seager at their prices in cash games either. I think they're really strong plays. Yeah. Um, they give you good at-bats. Yeah, definitely. Um, we mentioned Aaron Hill. He's got third-base eligibility also. Um, who's the other guy that I was liking at the top here? I lost it, no? Was it Beltre against the lefty? Yeah, I was going to talk about Beltre as a GPP play, but there was yeah. somebody else that I had as a cash game play. But, yeah, um, hard to really love him against Kuchel, especially with the way he's been hitting. Yeah. But, um, I mean, hopefully he at least gets it going against lefties because he has been really struggling. Yeah, he's been he's been pretty bad. Um, Alex Rodriguez is swinging a pretty nice bat right now at 3,800. Still hate rostering the guy because, I mean, yeah. I just – I just don't like him. I just don't think he's nearly as good as he once was. He's been hitting some home runs, but, I mean, it's also pretty nice to be at that short porch in Yankee Stadium every day, or half of your good days, I should say. Yeah, definitely. Um, elsewhere at third base, there's really not much I like. I, I think I'm probably going to be paying up for one of these guys we've already mentioned because uh, the punts here just are not inspiring any sort of confidence for me here. No, me either. Um, no one – like especially cheap either. The guys I was looking at a little bit were like Solarte and Middlebrooks, but they're both playing Bumgarner, and that's why they're cheap. Yep. Um, there was someone else. Oh, Brock Holt for Boston yeah. is a guy I was going to look at. He was the only value play I have written down here. Um, I think he's 3000 on DraftKings, facing a right, right in Odorizzi. Um, I think he'll probably hit 6th or 7th today. Um, that's just an average value play. Like you said, I'd prefer to pay up for a couple of these top options. It seems more worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. All right, next up, shortstop, Troy Tulowitzki's $5,600 against Coleman. There's been an, an okay pitcher. I um, mean, he's a righty. Of course, he's at home. You prefer Tulo against a lefty. Yep. I mean, he's certainly in play. Another one of those guys, there's no way that he'll be in my cash game. He's just too expensive. Um, Hanley Ramirez, not far behind him at $5,200 against Odorizzi. Pretty pricey. Once again, just going to be a GPP option for me or maybe in a uh, Boston stack. So for me, I'm going to be looking for value at shortstop, trying to get myself uh, some punts. Marcus Simeon's been swinging a nice bat, batting near the top of that order at 3,900. Uh, don't mind him. Jimmy Rollins isn't swinging a good bat, but a great matchup against Kyle Loach. Yes, at my favorite, my favorite player until seven Eastern every day, and then my <laughs> least favorite player until the next morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great way to put. It. I mean, he always looks <laughs> like he's in a good spot, and then you just 
hate yourself for playing him. But, I mean, he's cheap, and if he gets on, you expect he's going to get brought home by these big bats behind him. Yeah, I mean, he's got to start getting on, though. But this price is just really hard to ignore. Yeah. Um, especially as a switch hitter, I mean, it, it's tough not to play him a lot of the time. Um, as Drupal Cabrera, still hitting in the middle of that Tampa Bay order, Buck Holtz, up and down kind of guy. Um, I prefer Cabrera against righties for the most part. Thirty eight hundred, not a terrible price. And that's that's about it from what I see until we see yeah. some values for tonight. I mean, it's it's rough on shortstop today. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned Simeon already. Uh, you know, Escobar, is an okay play, I guess, for Washington. Probably going to hit second again, thirty five hundred. Um, Johnny Peralta has gone up in price, even though he's facing a lefty. He's a guy I'll consider, but. Um, I'm not overly excited about paying 4000 for him. Yeah, he has just hasn't been hitting that well right now. So, All right, moving on to the outfield. There's a lot of guys priced over 5K. Um, George Springer's a guy I like to play against left. He's at 5200 always seems to go under-owned. We don't yep. need to tell you about Mike Trout. You already know about Mike Trout. Corey Dickerson at home against the righty. If I'm paying up for one of the bats in this game and it's not Paul Goldschmidt, it'll be Corey Dickerson. Um, Elsewhere out here, if you're looking at the top, I mean, some of these guys really priced up. Like Gasmani Tomas now in Coors Field. We know he's better against lefties. He hasn't really shown much of his power, but 4700 is a really steep price yep. tag. Here's the guy I'm going to mention who's way too cheap, I think, today against a struggling pitcher. Hottest hitter in the world, Nelson Cruz, $4,400 tonight. Makes for a great tournament play. Yeah, definitely. Um, another guy right in that price range, Jack Peterson, 4300 against Lowe's, the righty. Um, he's hitting first in the order now. Um, I kind of like that order a little bit more now with him first and Rollins second because Rollins, has, Rollins hasn't been getting on base a ton, but he's been seeing a ton of pitches. So I think he fits a little bit better in that second spot, especially with Peterson red hot. Yeah. Uh, I think he's a pretty strong play today. Uh, Kevin Pillar is the guy that's been getting a nice uh, yep. nice line spot. No one's talking about him. 4,200 might scare some people away, but I mean, you're looking at four multi-hit games in his last six. I mean, the guys, he's producing, and you know there's going to be guys on base ahead of him. These other guys starting to swing some bats now, Bautista, Encarnacion, and company. So I think he's a nice uh, under-the-radar type of play. Yeah, guess who finally went up in price today? Bryce Harper. It's 4700 So it's about time. So despite the fact that I didn't need to mention him, I mentioned him anyway. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he's up to 4700 now. Jacoby Ellsbury's red hot. Um, he's a guy I'd consider against Dickey also. I mean, that's automatic stolen base when he gets on first base against Dickey. So yep. um, got to feel pretty good about that. 5000 not the best price, but um, I think he's a really strong play. He's been just on fire. I've been playing him like every day. Yep. He's and just he's, been fantastic. He's awesome. He's got a great floor, nice ceiling. And uh, one of my favorite guys tonight, especially because he's so cheap and destroys lefties. Yes, it's a tough matchup, but Justin Upton is $3,800. And, I mean, the guy is destroying the ball right now. I mean, he had a double dong game, what was it, five or six games ago. He's got three homers, I think, in his last mm -hmm. six. Multi-RBIs in three straight games, stealing some bases. I'm loving him tonight in tournaments against uh, Madison Bumgarner. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a couple cheaper guys I'm looking at, David DeJesus, who you mentioned on Friday, I believe. On, uh, I think he had a nice game facing Buck Holtz, uh, hitting first in the order right now at 3,000 on Tampa Bay. Um Hard to argue with that. Billy Burns hit first for Oakland the other day. He's only 2,600 uh, facing Hughes. So that's going to be probably my value guy today, uh, assuming he's hitting high in the order again. So it'll come down to that. Yeah. But, um, I Seth mean, Smith 20. Against the righty. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Seth Smith is 3,500 against the righty as well. She's yeah. batting second. I like him too. Yeah, definitely. I like the top of that order there. Um, we didn't even mention Billy Butler, but he's been pretty hot too, and he has a nice price today. Um, uh, another guy in that Oakland team that I like quite a bit. Um, we did mention Ike Davis. Unfortunately, he can't play both of them, which is kind of the, the frustrating part of that because I, I would like the first four guys in the lineup today, to be honest, as a under underowned stack, but can't do that on DraftKings, so unfortunately we're stuck there. Um, there's one other cheap guy that I was looking at. Andre Ethier. He's 3300 dollars against uh, Yeah, not a bad play at all. I'd rather him be hitting fifth, but I think he's been sixth or seventh most of the time, so yeah. uh, we'll just kind of have to deal with that. Uh, NCRT was the other guy. Um, 3900 price down a little bit because of the lefty-lefty matchup, but he's not a huge righty splits guy, so um, I don't mind him as a little bit of value if you want to get a Coors guy into your lineup, but you don't really want to pay 5000 for it. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, no talk about Jeff Francoeur today, huh? No, I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't, I don't mind him against the lefty. I mean, I just prefer Burns is the main reason. Yeah. Like, there's only really two guys that low that I'm looking at. 
And despite the fact that he's all the way down to 2,000 now because he's terrible, um, he's yep. still hitting fourth against the lefty. So if you need someone that cheap, I mean, he's in play. Yeah, that's true. No negatives on DraftKings, which Jeff Francoeur is probably pretty thrilled about right now. So Yeah, he's got, what, five, six zeros in a row now? Yeah, something like so that. So he's due. Consistency is key with him, right? <laughs> All right, well, that's going to wrap things up. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Tons of great content for tonight's action at dailyfantasycafe.com, and we'll check you guys out tomorrow.